Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today I'm going to do the first of three videos to mark the seven year milestone of my first ever booktube video, which for the record was on the uh, 31st of January 2014. It only seems like maybe three years that I've been making videos and it's been seven, which is frankly remarkable. This first video, I am going to be talking about the seven most memorable books that I have read due to booktube. Now, this is quite simply books that I would not have otherwise found by myself, or at least maybe not for a very long time in the future, if it wasn't for the influence of either fellow booktubers or indeed people leaving me uh, comments and suggesting books to me, which I have always appreciated. I hope people continue to do so. The amount of interesting books I have read due to both booktubers and indeed comments has been really high. And I've always appreciated every book I've read and every comment I've got because frankly, it's always been a really interesting and fun experience. Anyway, without further delay, I'll get straight on to talking about the book. And the first book is going to be an ebook. Actually, the second one will be as well on my Kindle, so there'll be a picture up on screen. And that first book is Nine Fox Gambit, written by Yoon Ha Lee. Now, this stands out for me because it is a military science fiction. It is not Western military fiction, science fiction, though. It, um, it's got a rather alternative feel to it. It did extremely well on Booktube and was very, very popular on Booktube when it was released in 2016, or at least that's when I first um, read it. I think it was actually 2015 when it was released. It was very popular. It was very popular with me and fellow Booktubers. I loved this novel overall. It's a complicated novel. I did a review of the first one, maybe, or the third at least. And I know other people did reviews of these because everybody else loved them. And it was an interesting novel with amazing writing characters. And the world building was alternative to what many of the, the booktubers that I uh, know are familiar with. Just a slightly strange world building that works extremely well. And for that reason, it is very memorable. It's the first in a trilogy. The other two books, personally, were not quite as phenomenal because you kind of knew what was going to happen, at least vaguely by that point. But the first one, and indeed but the overall trilogy, was amazing overall. Now, the second uh, book that stands out to me is Shards of Honor, written by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is the first book in a, I think at the moment it is 16 um, books now. It is science fiction and I have, because of this one novel, now read an awful lot of books by Bujold. I read 16 books set in this world. I read about five novellas set in this same world. I've set read three other fantasy novels along with what, what eight other fantasy novellas. So I read more than 30 books in this world, well by this author I should say, purely because of this one book. And for the record, I have to thank Rachel, a fellow booktuber uh, known as Kalanade, for this because her enthusiasm for the Vakozigan uh, novels by Boo Joel, which is, this is the first one of, was so enthusiastic and so blatant that I couldn't help but try the first novel and I'm glad I did because this is just a really fun, well paced, well written uh, science fiction series based on Miles Vakozigan mostly. The first novel is actually not about him however, it's actually about his parents and this is just a fantastical novel and overall world that Boo Jolt has written. I'm on that will always stand out to me and I will reread them at some future point. I'm hoping really badly that there is a new novel uh, set within the Vakozigan world. I don't know at the moment she's doing other uh, things but hopefully she'll come back to Vakozigan. Personally I reckon she'll do at least one more just to because she basically she won't be able to help herself. Anyway that's obviously me wishing. 
but we'll save him time. But I would greatly recommend these, really, really badly. Now, the next novel is actually a rather surprising one because it is The Garden of Evening Mist, written by Tan Tuan Eng. This is not science fiction or fantasy. This is, I believe, you class as literary fiction. This was um, brought and read slightly on the whim and the enthusiasm of a few other booktubers and I basically wanted to try something at that moment in 2018 a little bit different from what I'd read in the previous few years and this certainly was different because this is about a uh, Highlands of Malaya um, it's about one woman who sets out to build a memorial to her father who is killed in the uh, Japanese uh, occupation of the country and she gets friendly with a head gardener who was the chief gardener or something like that to the uh, emperor or the king of the country I can't remember the exact wording and they become friends and their story unfolds from there and it's a remarkable book and it's remarkable that I actually liked it as much as I did because this is not science fiction it's not fantasy it's slower paced, it's very introspective and emotional from the character's point of view. It's not quite what I'm used to, but I think it's memorable because of that. It was so different at the time and I still haven't read anything else like it since then. So this is quite unique amongst my seven years on booktube because it's very different, very unusual for what I usually read. That it stands out and stands out very strongly indeed. I would recommend this if you want something you know, alternative if you are like me heavily into fantasy and indeed science fiction because this is certainly different in pretty much every sense of the word. The next book that is uh, stands out to me is Trading in Danger written by Elizabeth Moon. This is the um, first book in the Vatter's War series of which there are five. The whole series is equally brilliant. I'm only choosing this book because, frankly, choosing all five books didn't really fit in with the theme of the video. Frankly, it's nothing else. Elizabeth Moon's writing and the characters that she creates in the Vatter's War series was fantastic. I loved this series. Now, this being the type of science fiction that it is, I may well have discovered this in time, but I'm almost certain I would not have discovered this uh, for quite a long time um, after I read this. So I mean, I probably wouldn't have discovered this for at least a couple more years the way I was currently going at the time. So I'm very glad that BookTube influenced me to read this because it was amazingly well written, amazing ideas, writing characters. Frankly, it's got everything that you could want. And obviously it's a big sort of uh, science fiction adventure for the most part with intrigue and mysteries and things going on so it's really well paced and frankly I'd recommend this very heavily. The next book is actually two books because they I read them back to back and indeed I uh, bought them simultaneously and those are the two books by um, Mary Robinette Cow which is The Calculating Stars and The Fated Sky. I brought these two books in America and in fact the second book The Fated Sky stands out to me because whilst I personally bought The Calculating Stars this I did not actually buy. Rachel, known as Canalari on Booktube as I've said, she actually bought me this in America as a gift. So these two novels are really, really powerful to me and the second one is memorable because you know it's a book that I actually didn't buy myself, Patrick gave me a present which I hold very dear to me and these two novels and there will be a third one this year was it, was it, was it just been released? I can't remember now were fantastic they were just brilliantly well written well paced and what uh, Cal was trying to say in these novels came across extremely well and whilst I haven't read much else by Cal since these, I want to, 
in time. Obviously, they're the, 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 the ginormous uh, backlist of books I want to read, so I'll get to them as and when I do. But I would recommend these because, frankly, they were fantastic. The penultimate book on this list is Stories of Your Life and Others, written by Ted Jiang. Now, this stands out to me for two reasons. One is, obviously, it is a phenomenal science fiction book. It's a short story collection. Every single short story in it, literally not one short story in it, actually failed to make me think, wow, this is amazing. With short story collections, that is extremely unusual. Actually, I think this is actually one of the unique collections because there's always, usually with every other collection I've read over the last seven years, at least one story that I thought, mm, that's not as interesting or I didn't get the point of it. With this, every story is phenomenal, which is unique by itself. The other reason that this uh, book is memorable to me is because I buddy read this with Rachel, Canadian booktube. Again, I'm going to keep mentioning the course this video. And we buddy read this together and this book just worked so incredibly well as a buddy read for the two of us. It was a powerful book for the both of us and I loved talking about this book with Rachel. We read each short story, we discussed them in length. It was quite personal in, in a lot of ways to both of us and I have a feeling that this was quite significant for Rachel as well. I could be mistaken, but I think the fact that we really read it together was a major thing and to me it always stands out. This was like one of the best body reads I've ever done in the last seven years. And that was frankly um very much to do with the fact that it was Rachel that I was body reading it with. And the book itself is fantastic as I said and it's just so worth reading. I cannot recommend this enough. It's one of my favourite books I've actually read over the last seven years, but I don't know what saying favourites as such, but this really was, this was unbelievably good to a level that I don't normally say books um, in that way that are that good. And the last novel that I'm going to talk about is by no means the least of them, because actually it is one of the most phenomenal short story collections, oddly enough, following on from that one, that I have ever read in my entire life, and that is the Stories of Ibis, written by Hiroshi Yamamoto, and it's translated by Takami Niida. I do try to make sure I actually say the translator's uh, name when I can actually remember to do same videos. I often forget that, but I'm trying. Now, this is, um, before I nearly forget, uh, drop it because it's extremely uh, smooth and the, quite slippery to hold, is a science fiction short story collection. It is from the point of view of a robot telling a story, or seven of them, to a human. The human got injured, he thought the robot, or sort of sentient eye, was going to kill him. He didn't, and actually, whilst the human man is recovering, the robot tells him seven short stories. They are somewhat related in theme to each other, but they are very, very separate. And the overall theme and the way um, he builds up this world and the stories is phenomenal. I didn't know what to expect from this. I brought this actually because of the uh, publisher, which is Heika Saru. I would not have tried this publisher if it wasn't for Booktube, hence why it's on this list. This was a remarkable book. I gave it a lot of praise when I read it in 2019. I also included this on a uh, joint sort of collaborative video with um, Rachel, not Callum a different one. Um, I, will, I will actually link her video where I did a little uh, two minute review of that in the description box below because I did mention at the time but only briefly once or twice I think. And this was an amazing book which I loved and stands out to me so strongly. And frankly, the, the cover, I don't normally mention covers on books. This, though, I think because of the title in red and the, the cover being so white with the little bit of green there is frankly remarkable. Although it is also a very slippery book, as I said, and I have dropped this book numerous times whilst trying to uh, prepare for this video in fact so 
hopefully I don't damage it too much. And with that said, that is actually it for all of the seven books that I have read um, and absolutely loved and became very memorable over the last seven years. If you've read any of these or you would like to, then please leave a comment. I will leave links to any individual views, but I did of any of these. I can't remember which one I did individual views on, which I didn't. As well as any other links that are relevant to these books or anything else I've talked about. And indeed one to both uh, Rachel from Kalanazi and Rachel the Shades of Orange channel as well. I mean that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and thank you for watching for the last seven years or, or the last seven minutes if this is the first video of mine you've ever watched. Regardless of which that is, I do appreciate everybody watching my videos for however long you've done it because if people didn't watch my videos I wouldn't be making them because I wouldn't be bothered frankly, it wouldn't hold my interest. The fact that people actually watch my videos and like them and indeed for the record I almost forgot to say that this particular video was suggested by Keely on Twitter. I actually asked about what should I do for Milestone on Twitter and all three of these videos that I'm going to do um, were suggested to me so thank you to Keely. Well this turned out to be an interesting one that I wouldn't have uh, thought of. Anyway with that said that is it for this video so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.